so I fell into the deep once again the sea of darkness then I cannot fail even if I swim ashore the dark will swallow me once more March 26, the year 2020. Norway has just shut down due to COVID-19. Restaurants, bars, hairdressers, retail shops, pretty much all companies that depend on customers coming physically into their premises, except those uh, defined as essential grocery stores and so on, lost all revenue overnight. The Norwegian Minister of Finance has just received the answer to an important calculation. How long will it take for shops to go bankrupt? The answer is despairing. For many of them, it will be a matter of only three to four weeks. I'm a technologist, and although I, don't, I know you cannot do everything with technology, I also know that you can hardly do anything without it. So I'm a technology optimist, and I'm a human being, and I'm a technology optimist for the sole reason that I am a humanity optimist. And that has been amplified through this story that's changed the way I look at myself and the way I look at what is possible. It has changed the way I look at human beings. I have experienced what I firmly believe to be a universal and powerful law, consisting of two main ingredients. First is that we choose our own conditions. Or what I call, in the program of our lives, we are the programmers. And secondly, it's finding an engaging true purpose. Tens of thousands of Norwegian companies needed cash support from the government and they needed it fast. And we're talking transfers of billions of Norwegian kroner every month. The minister had the cash for what was called Kompensationsordningen or the Norwegian Compensation Scheme, but he had no means to identify the companies in need nor to distribute the cash to the right beneficiaries. And money transfers between government and private uh, companies typically are handled by government administration, such as the tax administration or the labor and welfare administration. But modifying their existing computer systems for this task was complex and time consuming. It simply could not be done fast enough. It was said to be impossible. In Norway, there is a long tradition of collaboration between public and private sector. And since banks do the actual payout of money on behalf of government, banks were the next natural step to ask for help. The banks had optimized their computer system to help companies with loans in, during this emergency, but not for government cash support. However, in one of the banks, there was a small and different team. This is my team our team. So this is how we come into this story. And we're kind of like a SWAT team, almost like an odd little Silicon Valley startup. But we're still within this circle of public and private trust. And my team's usual job, day job, or rather unusual, is that we build entirely new digital solutions from scratch through experimentation of rapid cycles of trial and error trying and failing and trying even more. We like to say that nobody fails as fast as we do, because in our world, for every stairway to heaven, there's a thousand highways to hell. In this precarious situation, the government's attitude was to heal the patient first and then fill in the papers later. Papers later. So that meant that the detail Detailed criteria of who gets cash support and how much were not ready, and hence not passed in Parliament either. But although the detailed criteria was not ready, and although it was said to be impossible, and although this was not our responsibility and part of our day job, we decided to give it a shot. This was not an experiment. We truly thought it was possible. It just had to be. And failure was not an option this time. If money in the correct account was a necessary and inevitable outcome, and oh, by the way, 
do not get hacked. Because this was the mother of all honeypots for malicious minds. We had to ask ourselves, which truths would have to be true for this to become possible? Which conditions and circumstances that we had to create for ourselves in order to make this possible? Because clearly, normal rules, normal conditions did not apply. And one such truth was that we must build the simplest but convincingly sufficiently secure version of all possible solutions to this problem. Another truth was that we must build something so elastic and flexible that we can change it quickly when the criteria changes. Because of all the ever-changing criteria from the government. So this is kind of like building the 30th floor of a skyscraper and then all of a sudden being asked to move the foundation two blocks north. So this is very different from the traditional make a great plan and execute it well approach of many big technology projects. But despite attacking this problem in a radically untraditional way, we immediately realized that one of these other truths was that we had to keep an enormous and almost unbearable pace. Working around the clock became almost literal. 20, 20 hour working days became the standard rather than the exception. Fortunately, I don't have to spend a lot of time shaving every morning. I'm a single parent of my two kids, and the three of us were together in isolation during this whole period. And I personally lost conception of time until my 12-year-old daughter asked me, Dad, are you still in a meeting? Yes, I'm going to finish soon. Yeah, it's just that it is Saturday and it's almost midnight, and it's Easter Eve. That touches uh, your daddy's heart. Not that she minded staying up late. Three weeks later, the minister announced on national television that money is on its way. And there were many parties involved, and all of them were very satisfied. Perhaps the most satisfied were my kids who got their dad back full time, and once again, a warm daddy heart. But at the core of it all was this one small team where time was most critical. They redefined their circumstances, mobilized the finest in human beings, made the impossible possible, and caused survival rather than extinction for thousands of companies, let alone the consequences for their employees and their families. I firmly believe that in the program of our lives, we are the programmers. And in this project, we lived. By that. I've circled through on the gates of hell, felt I was helpless. It's time that I fell when I see a rainbow. I believe I'll get back to my love. Then the rain on golden light Gleaming through the darkened skies Makes me stand up straight and fight Try to make it through the night And dry my tears And go where my heart truly lies What does it mean that in a program of our lives, we are the programmers? What does it mean that in your life, you are the programmer? Let me answer by asking some questions. What does it mean to have a sense of deep purpose? And what does it mean to be a human being in contrast to, say, a computer? What does it take? First is our self-awareness. An ability unprecedented by any other species throughout all time. It's the ability to have a thought process about our own thought process. To see ourselves from the outside. Secondly, it's our imagination. The ability to see the outcome of our actions before we carry them out. To envision paths for the future, as well as the outcome of simple actions, before we actually take action. And thirdly, 
is a conscience, our inner compass to distinguish right from wrong. And this makes up our free independent will, because we can see ourselves before we act, compare it against desired outcomes that we have already imagined that our conscience can confirm to be good, not bad. And this comes with responsibility. It is up to us not to blame conditions, but to make decisions. Responsibility is a wonderful word, responsibility. Even in spite of unfavorable conditions and ungrateful circumstances, we have the ability to choose our own response. Through our self-awareness, we can pause and reflect on our response. To put it in the lingo of a tech person, in the program of your life, you are the programmer. Combining our conscience, self-awareness and imagination, we can search in, inside ourselves to find out who is it that I truly am and who is it that I truly want to become? My true self, my purpose, my why, my reason to exist. Have you ever done the gravestone test? Using your imagination, envision your own funeral many years from now. What is it that people say when they share their memories of you? What were you like? What were you really about? And ultimately, what does it say on your gravestone? And there are many versions out there. On my grandfather's gravestone, it simply said, farmer. And on my grandmother's, his wife, it simply said, wife. Because this was their life dedication through struggling and ungenerous years before, during, and after the Second World War. There are also other versions, kind of more posh versions. Uh, one is over, over conductor. And that's not an over conductor or a philharmonic orchestra or anything, but an over conductor of a tram. And perhaps the funniest of them all, car owner. I find that hilarious. But you might want something deeper, something that reflects your mission, your purpose. In my case, I hope it doesn't say, he got money to companies during the pandemic, but rather something along the lines of a technology dreamer or a crusader of always changing the game. Purposes are not just for individuals, they're also for groups and for teams. So what is the purpose of our team, the SWAT team in this story? Our purpose, our why, our reason to exist is that in everything we do, we believe in creating a future where people have more peace of mind and where people and organizations can do more of what really matters to them. Our why. We do this by fearlessly exploring how new technologies can create a portfolio of options for what might become this future. Our how. And we do this by building and breaking things. Our what. But neither what we do nor how we do it applied this time. But it was the essence of our why, the peace of mind, think of it as sleep well at night, and the what really matters to people that still applied. Because if all those companies went bankrupt, it would nef definitely not be peace of mind for all their employees and their families, and definitely not being able to do what really matters to them. And during the chaotic and confusing times of the corona crisis, our purpose was our guide. Our purpose was our driver to embark on this trip into dire straits and into stormy waters. Our purpose kept us fighting when there were not enough hours in a day and it felt like the ground was dissolving underneath our feet. Our purpose made, our, made us dry our tears and go where, where our hearts truly lie. And in a world where computer algorithms make more and more decisions for us and becomes better than us in a lot of things, we can stop worrying about that and take control if we capture what is genuinely human. Our inner core, our reason to exist. As individuals, as teams, as groups, and ultimately as humanity. And this is what has changed the way I look at myself and how I look at what is possible. And this is what has changed the way I look at human beings. 
And I take no claim for inventing this, nor for discovering it. But through my story, I have experienced what I firmly believe to be a universal law. And although this could have been a story about debureaucratization or about technology bravado, it is not. This is a story about the universal law that applies to all people at all times, under all conditions. And this is why I want to share it. We need to nurture our human qualities that computers don't have. Self-awareness, imagination, conscience, free independent will, and use that to find our true purpose, choose our own conditions, and be the programmers in our lives. When that force awakens, it creates hearts of lightness. It mobilizes the finest in humanity, and it shows the power of purpose. And just like our dearest child mobilizes an unconditional power in us and a devotion to do pretty much anything for it, just like that, the dearest child of humanity is purpose, and that makes the impossible possible. Now it seems, oh so long ago, the sea of darkness that will endlessly grow. Now I'm standing in your rays. I feel a warm breeze touch my face. And then a ray of golden light and glimmers through the darkened sky. Makes me stand up straight and fight Try and make it through the night And dry my tears And go where my heart truly lies Now there's rain on golden light Over to the darkened sky Got me through the fight Now I'll make it through the night I've dried my tears I'm now in my heart truly lies